Hi everybody, it's Coach Gill here and welcome to the Build Your Body and Mind podcast. Today I will be continuing my Women's Health Over 50 series. Last time we spoke about depression and building a positive mindset, but today we'll be delving into the world of strength training, specifically tailored for women over 50. Whether you're a seasoned fitness enthusiast or just starting your wellness journey, this episode is packed with a lot of great ideas, a lot of insight, and practical tips to get started. One of the questions you may have is, why does strength training matter anyway? Why do we even need to bother? Why can't I just maybe run or walk a few minutes a day? Isn't that enough? Well, strength training is good for all ages, but I will say as we age, whether we're male or female, as we age, we lose muscle. And for women, it starts at about age 35. We are slowly, it's not noticeable yet, but we are slowly losing muscle. And it only accelerates as we get older. So by the time we're 45, we are losing a significant amount of muscle. And then after 50, it's a downhill battle to the point we can't get it back. So as you age and as a woman, you must, if you want more muscle, the only way is to sort of fight the monster and either lift weights or at least do exercises with body weight uh, to get back that muscle and keep it. So one reason why we want to lift weights is, well, the the most superficial reason is, well, we want to look good because the more muscle we have, what happens? The more fat we burn. So in order to exist fat, sorry, in order to exist muscle needs to burn fat. So that's good. But aside from the aesthetics, The more muscle we have, it does enhance our overall health. So that means maintaining bone density. The more muscle you have, the more it supports your skeletal structure. And that means that, so yes, you have dense, your bones are denser, but also it means, you know, if you are to take a fall or have an accident, you're less likely to break a limb. Also, the more muscle you have, the more your metabolism is boosted, meaning then the more fat you're going to burn. So it is a what I call a positive vicious cycle. The more muscle you have, the better. Now, I know one of these famous stumbling blocks, well, one of these psychological obstacles that women place before them is to, well... I don't want to lift weights because I don't want to get big and bulky. I don't want to look like a man. That That is that. First, you know, it goes to genetics. An acorn, no matter what happens, no matter how much you water it, an acorn will never turn into an oak tree. And the same holds true for women. No matter how much we lift weight, we're not going to turn into a man. We're not made the same. So it's true, men will buck bulk up because they have more testosterone and other hormones that cause them to put on mass muscle. For women, it's different. There's only so much muscle we're going to have no matter how heavy we lift. But the heavier we lift, the leaner we will get, the stronger we will become to, like I said, resist um, a broken leg or a broken wrist. And to boost our metabolism. So yes, you should do that. The more you lift weights and the heavier, the better. And that is my philosophy. Next, we should... So Okay, so fine, Gil. I'm going to listen to you. And I'm going to start strength training. Well, what sorts of things should I consider? And that is a good question. And... First, as I say this in almost every podcast episode, really to get the best effects of any training plan, you should seek out the guidance of a certified coach. 
because that coach can help you with a number of things and help you avoid injury, and that's key. A coach can help you reach your goals without hurting yourself. But you don't need a coach to get started with strength strength training or any other sport for that matter. There's a lot that you can do on your own if you don't want to spend the money on a coach. So the things we should consider when we're creating a strength training program for ourselves is one, the frequency. How often should we be strength training? And I would say if you're a beginner, twice a week. And perhaps one day you do the upper body. I used to do this. Uh, One day you do the upper body, and then the second day you do the lower body. But I would say the ideal for once you've gotten that under your belt, it's not so difficult. Once you've gotten that under your belt and you're finding, you're seeing some progress, I would say three times a week is about right. The next point is intensity. So finding the right balance between challenging and sustainable. So obviously we don't want to do too much too soon because that will result in injury. Well, if not burnout, if it's too heavy or too hard, then you may not even continue. So finding the right balance where you are progressing without doing too much and you hurt yourself. Next are the types of exercises that you should be doing. So we want to target the major muscle groups. So we're thinking squats, deadlifts, and push-ups. All three exercises use a lot of mul- a lot of muscle groups at the same time, and that is ideal. And next, we need to consider how we're going to gradually increase weights and resistance. Maybe you already know. If you do the same exercise the same way with the same amount of weight, you may progress some, but then all that progress is going to be lost because it becomes too easy and you you will then fall into what we call a plateau. So as soon as something gets a little easy, then you, you always have to amp it up a little bit and often increasing the weights is the best way. And last is recovery. So every good training plan has included uh, not only rest days, but also days where you you are going to have a session, but it's not going to be too demanding. It's it's, we call it active recovery. So those are the components that should be in a good strength strength training plan. I'm going to do that a lot. Strength, strength. I think I stutter. Anyhow, um, Also, one thing that could help keep you motivated, and we'll talk about motivation in just a few seconds, um, think of strength training as functional fitness for everyday life. When you're doing this, it's not just about the aesthetics. It's also about functional fitness. If you look at things like uh, carrying groceries or playing with your grandkids, other activities, your improved strength in a training session, will spill over into other activities in your daily life. Next is nutrition. And yeah, we've got, we've got some myths. The same way about lifting heavy weights. If you're a woman, lifting heavy weights will make you bulky. The same goes to nutrition. I don't know what it is, but we're sort of convinced that we need to cut all the carbohydrates out, eat just fruits and vegetables, and a lot of protein. And fair enough, one point is true. As we age, our body stops making protein. So the only way we get it is if we eat it. So it is true that as you age, you shouldn't increase the amount of protein that you are taking in. And what's happened is people have sort of, they've gotten a hold of the keto diet, and that's where I'm I'm coming to. And it's true, if if you eat protein and get rid of carbohydrates, you will lose weight. The problem is it's not very healthy for you. I am never an advocate of eliminating entirely a food group. We need all of those things to have a healthy body. Um, The keto diet was designed by scientists and the idea was they had overbeast, morbidly or obese men who couldn't even move, couldn't even leave the bed. They were so heavy. So they were put on a keto diet. 
as a short-term fix just so that they would lose enough weight so you could then get them out of bed and walk and then the next stage would be putting them on a less restrictive diet and having them walk because really exercise is what's going to allow and strength training is what's going to allow them to move and lose more weight. So the keto diet is not designed for people of a normal weight and it's definitely not designed for women who just want to lose a few pounds or are over 50. So forget the keto diet. Um, however, we do need protein, but we need protein with some carbohydrates and definitely some healthy fats. You cannot eliminate all fat and, and you shouldn't want to. You need that too. Just the healthy fat like avocados, things that come from nuts and seeds. Those fats are good. For example, unhealthy fats would be, first of all, trans fats. When you deep fry food, we want to avoid those. And also any fat that solidifies. So, for example, olive oil is good when, when you, it doesn't matter the temperature, it stays liquid. Something like butter. What happens with butter when it's no longer heated? It turns, it solidifies. That's probably an unhealthy fat, although I do love butter. Anyway, um, we need all three of those foods to grow more muscle, develop more muscle and get leaner and fitter. And lastly, I am going to talk a little bit about mindset and motivation. Yeah, motivation wanes. We get excited when we set these goals. So yeah, I'm going to get lean. I'm going to do a strength training program. Um, but the motivation wanes a little. And, and that's why I say motivation is great. But that's not going to keep the ball going. That's not going to keep the momentum going. What's going to happen is you're going to have to go to fall back on discipline. And when we talk about discipline, it goes to thinking about our mind. That's where mindset has to come into place. We set realistic goals. We're going to celebrate the small victories. We're going to have little rituals to help keep the momentum going and to help reinforce the discipline that you need to keep going, to continue. Now, with all that said, I am thrilled to announce my new fitness program entitled Finish Strong. It is a coaching package, but it focuses primarily on strength training. So in the past, well, and even now, I coach amateur triathletes to prepare for triathlon races. So it's a swim, bike, and run, and strength training. With this package, it will be focused on strength training. That will be the star. And I will provide training plans that are adapted to your individual needs. This is ideal for beginners. But if you happen to be someone who practices an endurance sport, such as swimming, biking, or running, I can easily include those items into your training plan. And in fact, there should be some cardio at some point in your training plan, even if it is mostly strength training. My new program isn't just a workout plan. They're not just training plants. The whole program establishes a comprehensive foundation. So I will equip you with knowledge beyond the exercises, beyond the plan. And the keys to this program are one, safety first, which means you're going to learn to train without injury. It is a holistic approach, which means you will be strengthening your entire body. You get tips, plenty of tips on where to start, and this is why it's most supportive for beginners. And the training plan it is adapted for you and your personal needs, your individual needs. So there is a progression that is suitable for you to help you level up without burnout. There is also the idea of balancing life goals. How do you stay committed amid a busy schedule? It's not always easy, but my training plans will adapt every two weeks to what your schedule is and Basically, every two weeks, I will give you a new training plan. And if there are things that you can't do on certain days, then I will adjust it. So it is a highly dynamic 
training plan platform. I will also give you some advice on fueling your strength journey, and that goes to nutrition. And finally, I take into account life stages and training. What do I mean by that? Well, my target audience is women. So that includes pregnancy, menstrual cycle considerations, and menopause. During this process, I will demystify some of the power exercises that you hear all the time and you're wondering, why do we do these so much? So I am talking about squats, deadlifts, and presses. These are your power moves and I break them down, ensuring you use proper form and you are effective. I will help you or support you in setting achievable goals. And I'll help you sort of come up with realistic targets and we'll always celebrate progress. Hormones play an important role in training and that includes strength training. Understanding how they impact your training and adjust, adjusting accordingly, accordingly is essential to success. And I will be there to help you with that. Also, this training plan will be versatile. So it will be adapted either for body weight exercises, weight, I usually suggest kettlebells, or both. It doesn't matter. And you will learn about when you should push yourself and when you should rest listening to your body. I will discuss the delicate balance of intensity and recovery. So with all of those factors in mind, if you are interested in more information, please feel free to contact me on my website, Golden Triathlon Coaching, and the email address is contact at goldentriathloncoaching.com. Remember, ladies, strength knows no age. Whether you're lifting weights or lifting spirits, you're part of a powerful community. Until next time, you stay strong, stay smart, and keep celebrating what your body can do. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Build Your Body and Mind podcast. If you enjoyed it, please leave me a review and share with your friends. Until next time, stay strong.